What's one of the dumbest things you've ever spent money on? My family visited Colorado when I was 10 and I saw a statue of a mosquito in a gift shop with the word state bird on the bottom and begged my parents for it. We now have a rather large mosquito statue on our piano. I'm king of envious to be honest. Odd piano toppers are great. I was 11 and my dad gave me 50 bucks to spend at the mall. So, I wandered into a gift shop and spent it all on an electronic vibrating oinking pink pig. I never played with it after I brought it home. Tried to return it, only to be offered store credit. You taught your father a valuable lesson in financial responsibility. When I went on a school field trip to Washington DC back in middle school, I bought a $2 bill at a souvenir shop for $20. SMH. That's a shame they practically scammed a kid for 18 bucks. I was drunk and bought monster ballads off an infomercial, and I paid an extra $20 for rush delivery, because I was drunk and needed it ASAP, and it showed up a month later. I've always wanted to meet someone who bought music off an infomercial. This is a big thrill for me. There was this guy named Don Lepre who sold money making kits, like how to make money with classified ads. I think I invested about $350 and received literally nothing of value. I was young, uh, and being stupid. Looked him up tonight to remember how to spell his name. Turns out he killed himself with a razor blade while in jail in 2011. I have to say, his TV commercials were very convincing. Thankfully at the time I was young and broke, so I couldn't pay for his nonsense. If I had enough room on my credit card, I would have. I finally figured out that he implied lots of income, but the testimonials only talked about revenues. When I was like 14 I bought a pack of intentionally mismatched socks that were really expensive. Like, only one of each pattern. Could have bought twice as many normal socks and just mismatched them myself. I did this too but to make it worse I bought two packs so that I could match them. When I was 19, I got a construction job that paid fairly well. Stupid me got all hot and frisky for a fun car. I signed up for a 5 year loan after test driving the first one. I ended up having engine failure almost 2 years later. Because it was a used car and from a shady used car dealer. The warranty was well expired. I couldn't afford to get a new engine for it so I ended paying over 3 years for a car that I wasn't driving. You got roped in like a junior enlisted member. This past Christmas Eve I was doing some last minute shopping and came across a wine glass shaped like Buddy from the movie Elf which of course also had Will Ferrell's face on it. With everything kinda being out of order with the holiday rush I didn't know how much it cost. But I bought it on pure impulse because I thought it was funny. It wasn't until I left the store and looked at the receipt did I realize that it cost $22, which is way more than it's worth. To remind me of my mistake, I now drink out of that glass exclusively and have been for the past 5 months. I have to wash it like twice a day but I won't stop using it until I feel like I've gotten my $22 worth. Most expensive dumb thing, a Mercedes 500 cell. Literally bankrupt myself buying parts and gas for that freaking land yacht. Sold it for half what I paid and felt lucky to be rid of it. Dumbest dumb thing, a metallic gold laden painting of a Pontiac Firebird. It uses white trash and I had planned on putting it in a family gift exchange as a joke but didn't end up going and got stuck with it. It's currently hanging in a storage room, like all classy paintings do. Hang it in your garage so all your neighbors see it whenever you open your garage. I spent $40 one of those amusement park booths where you had to throw darts at balloons. But for some reason, I picked out this really ugly 7 feet tall frog stuffed animal. It's in the corner of my closet and still scares me when I'm half awake in the morning. I had one of those from Six Flags. I won it early in the day and my dad was so pee. I named his froggy Micopastine and kept him for over 10 years. My mom finally got rid of him saying she couldn't spare that much space for him anymore. R.I.P. Got drunk and started ordering ninja gear off of Amazon and forgot about it until it showed up like a week later. Swords, nunchucks, a suit and mask. Please send photos. That's hilarious. I was just a few weeks out of basic training and bought one of those family lineage with the shields on it and description. I blew $500 or so bucks just to find out it wasn't even accurate. LOL classic boot. Shamwow. I mean, 
It's got Sham right there in the name. But I wanted to support Vince from ShamWow's crusade against Scientology. The blanket that makes you look like a giant burrito. It was super thin and of poor quality. Not to mention not big enough to cover me. Now I'll never look like a burrito. As an owner of this burrito blanket, yes, it is small, but it is very soft and very comfortable. A piano. Dumb, stupid, costly and near worthless. But the, ex, wife wanted a real piano for the kids because they would then practice on it. Bulls, $3,500 for the piano. $4,000 in lessons. All for teaching them to hate playing the piano. You were supposed to buy a used piano from someone who had already made the same mistake. Boxes. I never save them and toss them in recycling. Well, moving time came around and I was in need of many boxes. So I spent more money than I would like to admit of cardboard and bubble wrap. Most boxes aren't anything special and generally you don't need to keep them. The one exception I have made is the box of my TV. I read a moving tip on reddit actually to keep your TV box so it makes moving your TV that much easier. A few months later I snag a TV for like 40% off from a going out of business sale and kept the box and styrofoam that came with it and yeah moving it was a breeze. I absolutely loved her, but the great Dane I had was dumb. I'm talking so freaking irredeemably dumb that she would regularly smash face first into walls chasing flies, and run right into a closed door, not see through. When I asked if she needed to go out, she was a sweet loving good girl. I love my great dame but she is also a complete idiot. Yesterday I watched her accidentally pick up a rock instead of her bone and then bark at it for 10 minutes because she couldn't understand how it had changed from a tasty treat to a lump of stone. I once bought my girlfriend a hat and had her name embroidered on it. She asked me if I would ever wear a shirt with my name on it. I would not. I'd had a few drinks. TGIF, and wandered into a Williams Sonoma store in a state of euphoria. There I saw a special edition KitchenAid stand mixer made in bronze that was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. It was on sale for $999. Naturally, I bought it, but because I'm a single guy who doesn't bake it's just taking up much needed counter space. No time like the present to learn. Hum. A paddle board. I seldom actually make it out to the beach lately, especially currently. And when I bring it, I'm twitching with paranoia if I leave it on my car because someone may steal it. Should have just kept renting. I bought a cat eye stencil off Amazon that's supposed to help with liquid eyeliner application. Because my hands are shaky as frick. Didn't check the reviews. It's a crappy piece of plastic shaped like a cat that breaks really easy, apparently. I wouldn't know. I bought it a week ago drunk and it's shipping from China with an estimated arrival of the 27th of July. OMG I bought that thing last year. It's such a stupid product. Tried it twice before giving up. Turns out huge cat shaped pieces of plastic don't exactly fit into the corners of hooded eyes. Both times I looked like I let my dog try to do my makeup. I bought a pager. The clip snapped. I took it to where I bought it. We only cover the pager. Not the case I walked outside right in front of the window and spiked the crap out 8f it. Walked back inside and said my pager is broken. A pocket pee. It was back when me and my wife were still dating. We were out of town for a concert, a festival or maybe just the weekend. And there was this big, heavily advertised and kinda posh adult shop just a block or two down the road from our hotel. The last day of our trip, we didn't have anything planned. So we ended up going into this shop. They had a whole floor devoted to dildos and vibrators. And my wife found one she really liked. I started joking around about how they have all these toys for women and nothing for guys and one of the shop employees overheard. He brought us up to the third floor. And showed us this large-ish section that was all frick toys. It was like four whole rows. Each one 20 feet long. Packed to the brim with silicone pee. They had feet with pussies. Hands with pussies. Tea with and without pussies, headless and limbless torsos, mouths of all variety and a whole line of head to toe, life size frick dolls. Most of it was really expensive, but I managed to find this one that had a glove attached to a pee and butthole for like $40. So I bought it, 
we paid for our purchases and went back to the hotel to have fun. My wife really liked her toy, and after a while she asked if I wanted to use mine. I thought about it for just a second and then said number. We had our fun, packed up the next morning and left. I stuck the pocket pee on our coffee table to mess with some friends who were coming over the next day. After the friends left, it ended up in the back of our closet and stayed there through a move and more than a decade. Until my 6 you found it last November. Purchased to traumatize your future children. I once went to a novelty thrift shop that had a ton of random crap. Ended up spending $10 on a framed picture of Count Dooku. Darth Sidious and Jango Fett from Star Wars since my GF thought it was funny. The frame recently broke and I found out after seeing the back of the picture it was from a calendar when Attack of the Clones came out. Someone just cut this picture out of an old calendar, put it in a frame and my dumb butt voluntarily spent $10 on it. You bought the frame. My buddy and I decided to saran wrap another friend's car shut. Mind you, this was 1999. Do you have any idea how much saran wrap $37 buys you in 1999? My buddy's parents are still using the leftovers to this day. Well, in 2011 it could get you more than enough for a minivan so I can only imagine what it was like 12 years prior. My friends and I randomly decided to get into paintballing one year. My first visit to a paintball shop. I apparently felt like flexing my brand new I have a job and no bills because I live with my parents income. So I dropped about $400 on a paintball gun that looked like an AK-47. The way a nerf pistol looks like a Glock. We did a few practice fights with each other, then went to a paintball field that weekend. The bell rang. The fight started. I ran out. Aimed at a guy. Gun jammed. And I got shot in the head. Just above the part my mask was covering. That gun never fired again and I ended up replacing it with a cheap Tipman 98 custom, which as far as I understand is the vanilla sherbet of paintball guns. It worked, but we stopped paintballing forever after like 2 months. So I guess the second gun was also one of the dumbest things I spent money on. This thing Suzanne Sums was pitching on QVC at 3am 15 years ago to help avoid getting wrinkles on your face. I was up all crazy hours with a newborn at the time so a bit delirious. It was some electrical impulse mini machine for approx $150. Suzanne looked fantastic and said she hadn't ever had plastic surgery and had just used this little machine on her face her whole life. I believed it. Spent the money and when it arrived 3 weeks later I never even took it out of the box to use it. A tiny alarm clock. Smaller than my hand. It actually functions pretty well though, so it's a good travel alarm, as long people don't get suspicious about the ticking noise coming from your bag. Also a great way to hide the sound of the bomb inside your bag. I bought a Kirby vacuum. They got me hook, line, and sinker. I've wasted money before, but this is one thing I always go back to and I'm actually ashamed of. Like, I fell for their whole sales pitch. It was like 2500 bucks for a dang vacuum. I was on a payment plan for a vacuum. They have a shampooer attachment. It blows as a shampooer. You can take the handle off and use it on the stairs. It's still fkin heavy and annoying. It has a transmission that makes it easier to go across the carpet. But when it decides not to play nice it takes like 8 times the effort to get a room done. Oh and the way the attachments works is a whole annoying ordeal. Please. For the love of everything holy and pure. Go to Walmart and get a vacuum. You can replace a lot of carpets for what one of those Kirby abominations will cost you. I just sunk around $7k in becoming a licensed massage therapist. Had my job a little over a year and was just stating to get pretty solid when suddenly I can no longer touch people or be within 6 feet of them. At least I paid off my student loans in February. My sympathies. Perhaps you need to contact the person who bought that 16 featuring net thing to turn off lights in their living room and see if you can't hack a 16 featuring massage machine. Just an idea. In elementary a kid called me pale. So I went to Walmart and bought spray tan. My dad thought it was sunblock. My sister knew what it was but didn't say anything cause she was just gonna sit back and watch how this plays out. I went in and out of the bathroom multiple times that day continuously reapplying before my sister decided it was time to tell my dad. I went through half the can in a day and was more orange than an oompa loompa.
but think of what that could have done for your future career. Priority shipping during covid quarantine. I just wanted to see if it would arrive but I'm still waiting on that order I placed in early March. A sword cane with a snake head on it. The blade wasn't sharp and I never used it. Just bought it to essentially look cool. Now I can't find it. Story of my grandmother. No offense to Christians. She spent big money for a tiny bottle of dirt. Apparently, Jesus stood on that dirt. That sounds like buying a bit of pavement because some celebrity walked on it. I bought the hats and beards, and my buddy got the church warden pipes. We had monthly hats, beards, and pipes gatherings in Afghanistan. We were bored and would spend about 300 monthly on this crap. First month was Gandalf, second was Lincoln. I bought like a $100 USD Raichu holographic Japanese team rocket Pokemon card when I was maybe 810, using my allowance for it. I never played Pokemon, just collected the cards because they looked cool. I still get teased from my family, 15 plus years later. Not me, but a distant relative and his wife, both in their 70s, sent a certain African prince several thousand dollars to ensure a shipment of 45 kilograms of gold he was receiving. He promised to triple their money once he got it. He gave no reason to why specifically they were chosen for it. They didn't think it was a good idea to tell anyone else about this wonderful opportunity they were getting, as they were worried we would try to take their money from them, or get a share of it. When the son of the deposed king of Nigeria emails you directly asking for help, you help. His father ran the freaking country. I just spent $250 on the 1989 Batmobile Lego set. Arrived today. Part of me is excited to build it. However the other side just thinks what are you doing you're a 27 year old man spending money on Legos during a pandemic. But still excited to build tomorrow. I'm 34 and still keen for Lego. Don't feel shame for doing things you like. I got drunk with my brother last weekend and watched Night at the Roxbury. Woke up the next day to an email confirming my $160 silk house coat was being shipped in 2 weeks time. I lost my job 8 weeks ago. One of my closest friends is a radical minimalist and a zero waster. She believes in owning as few things as possible, and, as best as she is able, existing outside of consumer culture. She's crazy, but in a lovable way. Anyway, last summer, we lived together in New England, and she decides she needs a new wardrobe and wants to donate her current clothing to purchase one or two items of clothing she will wear. She wants something really plain and modest so she's not participating in fast fashion or supporting consumer culture. I figured she'd go for some thrifted simple blouse and skirt or slacks but, number, oh no. She decided to spend upwards of $150 on a custom recreation of Maria's habit from the sound of music. None of us thought it was a good idea. It was a black, long sleeve dress, and it was regularly upwards of 90 degrees last summer. She does not heed our warnings. Donates all of her other clothes. She's convinced this dress will change her life. This is what she needs to truly devote herself to the zero waste lifestyle. The dress arrives. She puts it on. And her face immediately crumbles. It fits. But it looks so stupid. It is obviously a costume and is made out of this heavy fabric that is wildly impractical to wear. She can't return it because it's custom. And, I'd like to reiterate, she donated all of her other clothes, but she's unwilling to wear it from the shame. She spends the rest of the summer wearing nothing but pajamas and borrowed clothes. Thankfully, she started growing out of that particular brand of insanity. She now owns, like 5 outfits I think, but I don't think I'll ever see someone waste their money like that ever again. This is freaking glorious. My sides hurt and my wife just asked me if I'm okay. I bought my first stick shift not knowing how to drive a stick shift. Good morning after I bought it I tried to start it up and could not do so. I called the mechanic and he was going to charge $200. I told him that was fair I have no idea what's going on. He got in stepped on the clutch and started the car. He charged me $100. Secondly I had an old breaker panel in my childhood home one of the breakers tripped. I thought they fixed the problem and went to the panel to trip the breaker back. But nothing changed. I was also in a weird place in life and so really wasn't paying attention. 
but when the electrician showed up he's still charged $100 just pushing that breaker a little bit further than I did. I was at the Russian exhibit at Expo 86. My parents gave me a $20 bill and said spend $10. I bought $20 worth of Russian newspapers. To this day I still don't know what the flying frick I was thinking. A CD of Mickey Mouse rapping I bought in the 6th grade. Will never live it down with my cousins. I'm 37 and it's one of my biggest regrets. Chef Boyardee Beefaroni. One summer, because I was hella bored, I bought some Chef Boyardee Beefaroni and put it in my friend's mailbox as a prank. He didn't find it but his parents did, and they asked their neighbors who did it. He suspected me at first, but I managed to get him off of my tail. Now our neighborhoods were fairly close to each other, so I could be over there in a 50 minute walk. Every night, I walked up to their neighborhood. Walking anywhere at 2am is creepy as heck but the boy Ardy bandit does not stop for demons. And put a can of beefaroni inside their mailbox. After about a month, they call the police to find out who's putting beefaroni in their mailbox. Luckily the police really didn't care that much and just told them to get a camera which they eventually did. Meanwhile my friend is telling me all of this from his perspective. Right. So I usually know what they do before I strike. So I start covering my face. And pretend to hunch over. I have no idea where this camera is. So I can never be too careful. They call the cops again and give them a profile. And now the cops are looking for a crippled beefaroni bandit. After a solid 3 months of this crap, one of the baggers at the store gets word somehow, and starts getting suspicious because he sees me buying tons of beefaroni. He confronts me, I tell him the truth, and I crap you not he starts helping me beefaroni my friend's house. We're putting it all over hiding it in the lawns, porch, fence, you name it. Halloween rolls around, and I dress up as Chef Boy RD. I go to my friend's house and say your daily subscription to Chef Boyardee Beefaroni has ended. Would you like to renew? I hear laughter in the background, and it's the store clerk. Turns out he recently started dating best friend's sister, and that's how he heard. Truth be told, I don't think I've ever been punched harder than when my friend found out. Good times. We still laugh about it from time to time. TLDR. Bought and hid Chef Boyardee Beefaroni for nearly half a year around my best friend's house. The Beefaroni bandit strikes again. My cat. She's the sweetest girl in the world, and I spent so much goddamn money on her to make her happy and feed her good food. But good lord she is dumb as crap. She got stuck in a cardboard box today. It didn't close. She just didn't know how to back up and it was too narrow to turn around in. My cat rolls around when she's happy, and she just rolls right off the bed sometimes. My dog has more cat instincts than my actual cat. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.